Hey everybody, welcome back. This is render phone number part two for the skeleton section of module two. And now we've got a challenge where we want a we want a suite of code to take in an array of numbers and return a string with a phone number format in a correct fashion. So one way we could do that is this. It's gonna take in an array, it's gonna break it up nicely, add in portions of the string where it needs to, and then return a nice little formatted thing. Um, this is not ideal, speaks to the idea that what we would probably want to do is have a little bit more separation of the elements of this. This function is kind of doing a lot, and it could be seen as a little bit verbose, and it could be seen as a little bit uh, lacking uh, a dynamic nature. Um, it's also rather difficult to test this. You know, what happens if there isn't like a, you know, numbers uh, is missing something, or if one of the numbers isn't a number. Now, we're not actually going to go into most of that, but what you do want to consider is that this is one way to do it, Another way is to have several different methods, a phone number format or constructor function. And essentially, we're going to follow the pattern that we just did for the car. Okay, so um, definitely keep in mind this is optional. If you want to skip it, definitely feel free to. It is not going to come up on the interview, but it may come up. Well, it will come up later in the immersive. So I'm going to copy all of this, bring it on over here. Originally was going to go through the assertion functions and write specific test cases for all of these methods. Uh, I think that that's a good thing to leave for uh, you all doing this. We don't necessarily need to be mindless adherence to what the, uh, what's what been going on previously in this section of the code or section of the module just because this is so different and it's mainly uh, demonstrating a different concept. If you want to see all of that, I think I did something like that in the reference answers and the, uh, the documentation section. Uh, but if not, you just want to consider that all of these are probably going to be returning strings or portion of strings. So we would use something like an assert equal function here. And then a test case would just be obviously creating actual results from each one of these methods and then comparing them against what you think it should be producing. The problem with all of this is that how we get started is kind of, it's a little bit trickier. So essentially what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of both of these and we're going to say create a new instance of phone number formatter and phone number, these are going to be capitalized. So here's our constructor function. If you recall, the way we're going to create a new instance is going to be something like formatter is equal to new phone number formatter, and we're going to call that on an array. Now let's say, um, what's that one? It's like 8675309, that'll work. So that'll be the last numbers, and the first area code portion will be, uh, I don't know, 111. 18675309. No comma there. Okay, so there's our phone number formatter instance, and we'll move that over just a little bit so it shows up. Um, okay, so that's us creating a new instance of the phone number formatter. And what you'd want to consider is that at a certain point, we're going to call this render function, the render function is going to make use of some of the methods, build a string, and then return it. So, for our purposes, well, we've got to move that. Uh, let's say we want um, variable, um, hmm, what should the variable for this be? We'll say for matted number is equal to formatter dot render. And if you look up here, you'll see that render is a function that's going to create a string and we're going to add a bunch of stuff to it, and then we're going to return that string. So after that, we're going to console.log form. I'm going to copy and paste it. Formatted number. And then it should be something like our area code space, our, what is this called? Exchange code, which I did not know until I saw this problem. And then a dash. And then the line number, which is 5309. Let's just check back and make sure that that's what they want. Okay, so this is what they're looking for. Parentheses around the area code, then the exchange code, dash, line number, and it's all going to be inside of a string. Excellent. So in between here, we're actually going to be using this to test individual methods. And that's going to be like an as-we-go sort of thing. Okay, cool. So it looks like we have a slice method that's going to return this dot numbers dot slice. And okay, so if we're if we're going to do this, let's let's have a look at formatter. Formatter 
And this again, this is the new instance of our phone number formatter uh, constructor function. So on line 37, we're going to console the lock formatter. I'm going to comment out line 43 for now, because I don't really care what that looks like at this point. We're going to hit run. And we'll see that we have a phone number formatter is an object, and it's got a numbers property with the array of numbers in there. So when I say on line 31, this.numbers.slice from start to end, and then join them into a string, I am essentially slicing a portion of this array and then creating a string out of it. So if that's the case, let's go ahead and, and say something like variable, shoot, I don't know, area code is going to be the first three numbers, right? So let's say variable area code is equal to formatter.slice, which again is going to access this method, and it wants us to start and end. So let's say, oh, I don't know, 0 and 3, why not? And then we're going to console.log our area code. I'm also going to put this in a string first, so it gives us a nice idea of what we're actually logging to the console. So let's run this. Area code is 111. Looks perfect to me. So instead of formatter.slice, because we're working inside of the prototype, we can say this.slice. So here, I'm going to, because I want to get the area code, say return this.slice, which is in this context going to access the prototype slice, and then I need to give a start to end. And as we just proved, 0 to 3 is going to be the uh, correct idea. The way we're going to test this now is instead of formatter.slice, we're going to say formatter.getAreaCode. And getAreaCode, if you look, doesn't have any, any, uh, paren and, sorry, any parameters for it. So if we call getAreaCode, it's going to say this.slice 0 to 3, which is the same as saying this.numbers.slice 0 to 3, join as a string or sorry, join with without anything in between it. Okay, so area code is now equal to formatter.getAreaCode, which does not take any uh, arguments. And then we're gonna console.log area code. Excellent, so area code is working excellently. Now let's f go further with this, and if the line number is going to be the next three numbers, let's, let's do that. We'll start again with slice. It's formatter.slice, we'll go from, let's say, three to six. And that's going to be the line number. Change that to line number everywhere else. Just to ensure that we're getting it right. We'll run this one. 867, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want for the line number. So if that's the, oh no, that's not the line number. That's the exchange code. Well, that's okay. So we're going to say return this dot slice from 3 to 6. Now, we're not going to change it from line number because this actually is the line number, which is what we should have been doing in the first place. So let's say 6 to 10 for the line number and see if we grab what we need. 5309 is exactly what we need. So if that's the case, let's go ahead and try get line number as return this dot slice 6 to 10. And, well, we'll try it with, with get line number for this one. Say get line number, formatter dot get line number, and we'll make sure that that's working correctly. And it is. So here's where, and, and also we have one more called parenthesize. If we pass in a string to it, it's going to add um, what do you call them? Parentheses around our around our area code. So let's jump back up here to our render function, which is where we're doing all of this. So all of this is going to be string plus equals because we're just going to add everything to the string as we go. So we want to first get area code, wrap in parentheses, add to string, get exchange code, add to string, add hyphen to string, get line number, add to string. Sounds reasonable. String plus equals this dot parenthesize and to this dot parenthesize we're going to pass this dot get area code so it's going to get the area code here and then it's going to wrap it in parentheses and then it's going to add it to the string now I think that they want a space in there as well so we'll add the space and we're going to get the area exchange code and add it to the string. So string plus equals this dot get exchange code. Going to add a hyphen to our string. String plus equals a hyphen. 
that's an equal sign, that's two hyphens, there we go, get line number, so string plus equals this dot get line number, and we're going to call it, and then that should return our string. So now that we've tested all of our methods as we were going, we'll comment all of those out, we're going to uncomment the part where we save the phone number formatter, mm. are we doing that right? Yes, we are, we are. So we said variable formatter is equal to new phone number formatter with our low phone number there. We're going to console.log the phone number just for consistency. Line 52, we're going to assign to formatted number the result of calling formatter.render. Then we're going to console.log that formatted number, and hopefully it looks just like this. So let's run it, and we're in business. So that's an example of an object-oriented skeleton in JavaScript. Uh, believe me, it will get way more complicated than this, and there'll be a ton of different ways to do exactly what we just did here. But for the most part, the more of these you expose yourself to, the more it's going to be easier to work with as you go on. So let's copy everything, bring it back over to the input window, copy everything here, paste it in. Uh, we are going to forget the fact that we didn't write any assertion functions or test cases, because that's okay for now. We're going to run the tests. We are correct. Excellent work. So thanks for watching this optional lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.